Hello again, everyone. Zach Attack is here with my MTV 2013 30th Annual MTV Video Music Awards review. Um, of course, taking place tonight, August the 25th, from Brooklyn, New York, at the Barclay Center. My thoughts on the show tonight, um, I've made a review for this in two years. Because I didn't get to see it live last year, I was busy, but... I did make a little snippet about it on the attack line, but now I can make a full review of it. I always like to make full reviews of shows when I see the whole thing. In its entirety, the first time around, it's my little scheme with things. Um, I said two years ago, I, I quoted the Toby Keefe song, May not be as good as they once were, but as good as they ever were. And tonight's show, um, a little better than last year. Um, there was one performance that stood out out of every out of everyone. I think we all know who, uh, that would be. I'll comment about that performance, of course, the, um, JT performance. Um, we got some announcements, a reunion announcement, plus an announcement of an album, finally details about the new, uh, Eminem album. It, but the awards themselves, fan voting, proves... Now I know why, uh, like, watching the fans vote the awards tonight, now I know why I don't watch American Idol anymore. Or watch... Dance from the Stalling World. The fans fuck everything up. There's a lot of awards, a lot of people that uh, should not have won, in just my humble opinion. Um, we had, of course, two big winners with three each, and one man got shut out. And I'll tell you why I think he got shut out. Um, the beginning of this downward spiral, because we're going to uh, Wobb and Thick. Um, best song of the summer. One Direction's best song ever got that award. Um, they won last year, and it, was it just me? Or were they booing One Direction when they got the award? Well, it was after Kevin Hart made some stupid ass jokes without comment in a little bit. But, um, you know, I think One Direction got as loud booed as, as Justin Bieber did at the Billboard Awards earlier this year. Um, and of course, in my mind, Robin Thicke's a song of the summer, but the reason why I think Robin Thicke did not win any awards tonight. The song's overplayed. You know, I love Blurred Lines. I play it everywhere I go. Because Vampire Weekend, when they presented that award, they said that the song of the summer is that one song that you hear everywhere. Well, unfortunately, that was Blurred Lines. It was everywhere. You know, you couldn't escape it. It was overplayed. That's Because I think people are sick of the song. So I think that's why I think why we think didn't win anything tonight. Uh, there's a lot of people who won one award, besides one direction winning one. Uh... A lot of uh, people won one award, too, including uh, Janelle Monet in the technical for Best Art Direction. Capital Cities winning for Best Visual Effects, winning uh, one award as well. Uh, Pink, Just Give Me a Reason, that was a sign of fan voting. And I like Just Give Me a Reason, you know, Best Climb I played a few times. It's a, de it's a decent slow song, and I like the video, too. But we all know Blue Line should have won, but like I said, overplayed. I like his performance, though, which I'll get to when I come about the performances. Um, best rock video. I was stunned by this too. Uh, 30 seconds to Mars. Um, waiting for, uh, up in the year. I thought Imagine Dragons was gonna win it for Radioactive. I, I hate the song Radioactive. There'll be a lot of songs I say that I don't like them because, you know, I'm a disc jockey. I like playing the dancey songs, poppy songs. But people like Radioactive and I, video for Radioactive is one of the weirdest videos I've ever seen. You know, I compile videos from my show. I get videos from my show, from my DJ show, I play videos. I'm the only one who likes to play videos. No one else does play videos. That's what makes it weird that M3 does these award shows anymore. But hey, you know, I wear the shirt for a reason. I want my MTV, the old MTV. But I still watch it. Hey, you know, nice. at least they try to acknowledge videos. Anyway, um, like I said, I like the video for video. I thought that would win, but 30 Seconds to Mars. Speaking of when I was compiling videos, I've seen the video for this song, and it's an okay video. It's kind of a weird video, but they're kind of weird. They win. A lot of awards. I think the fans. Reason I think 30 Seconds to Mars wins is because the fans feel they get shafted a lot. You know, they don't get enough respect in the rock media. You know, they're not that famous, so that's I think fans voted. Um, Selena so Gomez almost won one. I thought that was an upset to a lot of you know fan voting. Come and get it. I've only played that song once or twice. I I, I remember watching the video when it premiered, and. Uh, I, I did like the new look of Selena. She was very sexy, you know, very adult. Speaking of sexy, I liked the dress tonight. Walking in the back up, it looked very elegant. And then you saw the one side with the with the 
with the ball hanging out. That's kind of like, you know, so Selena adult trying to act all adult now. And now, you know, Selena and Taylor Swift aren't fighting anymore. You know, those rumors that Selena and Taylor aren't besties. But bet you the, the reason why I think Taylor sat next to Selena is because Justin Bieber wasn't there. Speaking of Taylor, uh, Taylor also won Best Female Video for I Knew You Were Trouble. No, Kanye did not interrupt. Because Taylor won after Kanye performed. Um, so she won that award. You know, I like the song. I played it a few times on my show. Got a decent reaction in the video. I like that video too because it was like a different side of Taylor. And um, then we had a, the artist to watch, the best new artist award. The only award I didn't get pissed about who won because you know it's best new artist. Uh, Austin Mahone. What about love? He did the pregame show. It was a decent performance for being a typical. Justin Bieber wannabe. <laughs> he kind of act like Justin Bieber when he thank people. And there was like no reaction for him. You know, he got no applause. Um, then we had the people who won two awards. Um, we had, uh, Bruno Mars winning two. Um, I remember two years ago when I made my review for last, for the awards 2011, Bruno got shut out big time for Grenade. He won nothing, not even a technical. He didn't win a technical tonight. He won, um, Best Choreography for Treasure. And then he won Best Male for uh, Locked Out of Heaven. And I like that song. It's got to get the release vibe. And I, I like Bruno's videos from his album. The new album. Uh, Unorthodox Jungle. I like the style. Of it, you know, like an old old school look of him. You know, the VHS quality. You know, look like they were shot on VHS tape back in the 70s. I like the look of it. Like the retro style. Just pure performance videos. So I like that. Of Bruno. And, um, well, Bruno won two, tied with the most wins, three each. And what a how appropriate that the men who were tied for the most nominations tied for the most wins. Macklemore and Justin Timberlake. Macklemore won three, winning the best hip hop video and best cinematography, both four. The video for Can't Hold Us. And also winning Best Video with a Message for a Same Love, which I knew that was going to win because there was no competition in that category. And then, of course, JT, in my mind, had the performance of the night, including the uh, much Ballyhooed in Sync reunion, which I'll comment about there in a moment. Um, JT win the big three. He won uh, two technicals. He won Best... Uh, Direction for certain tie, but he also won best editing and of course the big one, video of the year with um mirrors. Now with this wins, these wins tonight, JT extends his most wins, seventeen wins in his illustrious history, three behind Madonna. He came into this with fourteen record wins, you know, career wins of fourteen, seven solo, seven in sync, counting technicals. And now he adds three more tonight, bringing his total to 17 total career wins. Now on to my thoughts on the performances. Like I mentioned, JT, performance of the night, he uh, did a medley of, all, like basically he did all of, his, all of his songs in a medley. You know, like even a snippet of what goes around. You know, he did like, he, he kicked out with, you know, with the take back tonight and ended with sit and tie. In between, he did sexy back and... I think his mic, like, his sound was, like, his sound was good. I think his mic was, like, fuzzled. But I think, besides that, it was a decent, it was, he was performing, he had the longest performance in about 15 minutes. And, uh, he, he killed it. I, mean, I like the dancing in it. You know, he, he was a dancer in the group, and now he danced solo. And, of course, Midway Tour's performance after he did, I think he did, like, a little bit of Senorita as well. He did, like, basically his entire fucking solo catalog. You know, he did Senorita, Like, I Love You, Cry Me Weather. And then, of course, came the moment that the entire world knew what was going to happen. The worst kept secret of the entire VMA is the reunion of NSYNC. Now, I'm a straight guy, but I'm a big boy band guy, you know. Like Zack Ryder, the WWE likes boy bands, and he's straight, you know. But, um, just to see those five guys together again, even just for two songs. <laughs> that was the only bad part that it was only two songs. Just in your teeth. Reunion tour, baby. Um, but seeing those five guys back together again, um, it was a sight to behold. I never thought that would happen because Justin's always the one guy that would say, no, that would never happen. And to push away his ego 
for that performance as part of his winning the Michael Jackson Video Bang On Award. Nice to see that they kicked off with, like, he, like, sang away with a snippet of Gone in the background, and the four guys popped up, and, you know, did a little bit of Girlfriend, and ended with Bye Bye Bye. I think Lance might have missed a step, but it was nice to see those guys together again. You know, JC, God, I like JC, too. But just as my, being my favorite member of the group, but, uh, you know, JC was, I, I, it was nice, like I said. It was just, I bet you everybody was just buzzing. I was on Twitter doing the performance, and just everybody on Twitter was just buzzing about this performance. I said on my attack line, I said, if JT wants to tour in sync through the reunion tour, which they'll make lots of money. Um, if he would ever commit to something like that, he's got the solo tour to do. So who knows if he would be able to do it, maybe not till next year, but at least the thought is there, you know. The the sprinkles of the reunion tour is there. Um besides uh JT's performance, uh being the best uh Performance, I got my own little awards. I did this two years ago. I got my own little awards. My own fake awards. Um, best comeback performance. Well, besides NSYNC. <laughs> uh, best comeback performance. Uh, Lady Gaga. Uh, Lady Gaga opened the show tonight. Two years ago, she opened it with uh, You and I. Uh, this is the, I think this is the performance we've been waiting for. You know, outrageous costumes. You know, to like many costume changes. She had this one... This all black thing, you know, this black bodysuit and this black thing to cover her hair up. You could put wigs on and she kind of like, you know, made fun of the critics with her dressing up in different looks. Like the the, uh, the poker face look with the wig and she had the look of the, the monster ball tour. She walked out first things first. She wore like this big white outfit with this big box around her head. When she walked out and then she like walked out like she was in a fashion show and the sound effects were saying like, Oh, not her again, you know, all the critics. That's what this uh, song applause is. This to all the critics, especially Perez Hilton, who uh, once again lit fuel into the fire of their fear by calling Gaga's performance disappointing. I don't think it's disappointing. I liked it. That's why I call it comeback performance. It was better than the performance in 2011. She came up with the clamshell bikini. I think a lot of people were hoping for that. I was hoping to see that clamshell bikini that she wore in the video for uh, applause, which I love the video. And I think that may, have big, that may be a big shooting to win some big awards next year to be amazed. But um I liked it. it was a great opener, you know. And Kevin Hart, speaking of awards, uh most most on most worst attempt at hosting. I presented the same award two years ago when I did my fake awards when I reviewed the uh, award show two years ago. And the most failed attempt at hosting went to Kevin Hart then. And once again, failed attempt to host. Worst attempt to host Kevin Hart again. I know he hosted last year, but he just wasn't funny. Especially the jokes he made about NSYNC reunion. He was like, Justin, I love your performance and all, but those guys of NSYNC, were they overweight? Did they gain a few pounds? You know, I thought they were out of breath. And then he said, like, you know, I thought Joey fought it. You know, the jokes, and I'm glad that there was no reaction. You know, he got booed with those jokes. It was just right, it was right after the reunion performance. And and then, like, Kevin did a cop out after he made fun of Joey's phone. He's like, but Justin, yeah, Justin, I love you, but Insync was overweight. You know, I was kind of, kind of stupid, but then he came back, like I said, a cop out and said, I still love you, but uh, it was kind of stupid. Um, you know, it's just unfunny. Um, best this to an ex lover, Taylor Swift, when she accepted the best female video, she's like, To the guy who inspired this video, I thank you because you got me this. You know, many rumors of flying that I knew you were trouble was about, uh, Harry from One Direction. So that was kind of a little kiss off there. And uh, there you go. Uh, most insane performance. Um, that would go to Robin Thicke and Miley Cyrus. Now, it's just me. Oh, Miley Cyrus was on something. I know she's not 21 yet, but like she came out first doing her song, uh, We Can't Stop. And the performance was just as crazy as the beginning of We Can't Stop. You know, she came out. Um, wearing this, you know, it was, like, full of teddy bears. The video was full of teddy bears, like, dancing teddy bears. She wore this, like, this onesie of, uh, the teddy bears. And boy, oh, boy, was there a lot of trucking. <laughs> you know, that's Miley's new thing, trucking, you know. And boy, oh, boy, she was trucking a lot and humping. Trucking, humping. The Humpty Dance is Miley's chance to do the hump. <laughs> do me, Miley. Do the hump, they hump. She was doing the Humpty Hump all right. And then after the hook song, you know, doing a little bit of We Can't Stop. And I think they bleeped Molly. You know, it's not Molly, it's Molly. You know, dancing with Molly. 
not dancing with Miley. And then she whipped off her outfit to reveal like a clear plastic onesie, like like the bikinis that the models wear in the Blurred Lines video. And that segue to Robin Thicke. She even read with them on Blurred Lines. That sounded pretty good, though. I like that performance. Even though she was kind of like humping everything, putting her hand on her crotch, thinking she's Michael Jackson. Well, she kind of thought she was Michael Jackson because, one, she was grabbing her crotch a lot and humping people. Maybe not the humping part, Michael, but two, she wore like, a glove, like a little, like a little glove. She was like, she was humping anything and everything. She was like, you know, like humping, like, and you know, crazy Miley, you know. You think she's crazy when she is in 21? Just think what happens when she is legal, you know. And her mom was there. And then after they did the duet of Bloodlines, Robin went straight to his new song, Give It To Me, which I kind of like, hope that's a good hit. But it doesn't get overplayed like Blurred Lines did. Like I said, why I think Robin lost all the awards because the song's overplayed. And he kind of recreated the video with all the floats. You know, I didn't see, I haven't seen the video yet, but give it to me. I know it came out a few days ago. I haven't seen it yet. But I heard there was this giant ass float and he kind of replicated it in the performance. So, uh, kind of like that. So it was, it was kind of a sexy performance, but it was crazy because Miley was just humping everything in sight. You know, she was high on something. She wasn't drunk because she's not 21 yet, but she was a little crazy tonight. You know, that's, that's Miley's thing. You know, Miley wants to, you know, really separate herself from the Disney era. Boy, oh boy, that she really did away with the Disney era with that performance tonight. So, uh, there you go. Uh, most powerful performance. Going to Macklemore and Ryan Lewis with uh, Mary Lambert. Now, I, as much as I would have loved to have seen him do the stuff or Can't Hold Us, I know he is the only guy in history to perform at all three major MTV awards in a year. That's why he had to do... Cause he was at the the uh, Rudy Awards for MTV Year. He did Thrift Shop there. He was at the Movie Awards this past April. He did Can't Hold Us. And now he's at the VMAs this year. Only all, all three major MTV Awards in one year. And he did Same Love, which, like I said, one best video and a message. And the performance was very simple, you know, simple staging with the American flags. You know, has a curtain raising up. It was just him and a band and Mary Lambert. And then the surprise appearance by uh, Jennifer Hudson near the end of the performance. It was just... You know, the message is awesome, and, you know, as I've said it before, I'm a, uh, I have a friend who's a bisexual woman, I, I'm not prejudiced, I'm not homophobic at all, I support all people, no matter what your sexuality is, especially when, uh, Darren Young came out recently at WWE Wrestling, I watch wrestling, if you don't, if you haven't watched my videos before, I make music reviews, and I'm a big wrestling fan, and one of the wrestlers, Darren Young came out, and I supported him, because like I guess I'm not prejudiced, and that performance, especially with Gaga in the crowd, a big gay rights advocate, you know, she was applauding, especially when Macklemore made the speech when uh, he won the award best video with a message. So, uh, it was just, the message is awesome. You know, it was a good message, and it's just, you know, he's not just known for the thrift shop song. He's on the cover of Rolling Stone this week, and I read the article, and he didn't want to be the thrift shop guy, because Psy, he didn't want to be the new Psy, you know, just known for that one song, Gangnam Style, but at least he got enough things to carry him on into to not being called a one-hit wonder. He's a three-hit wonder. Especially with Same Love, the message is there, and that performance was very powerful. I thought he deserved a standing ovation. JT got a standing ovation. Macklemore should have, too. Um, the perform. I got the, um, the, um, the award for, uh, most unnecessary performance, Kanye West. Now, I know a lot of people may say that Kanye's performance was the best of the night. You know, even JT said Kanye killed it. Um, not so much for me. I'm um, not the biggest Kanye guy, you know, his music is just undancing to me. Um, he did a Skinhead Jesus, I forgot the song he did, but uh, it was a song from his album, Jesus. And I didn't like the effect, though, the effect of him, like, standing in front of the house, and it was like, a, it was like, all dark, you know, he's like a shadow. Um, I didn't like that, it was, it was a decent performance, uh, to me, it was okay, it was kind of, like, interesting, but I, I just didn't like it that much. Personally, it was just okay. Um... Drake's performance as well, like, like, Drake and Kanye were just, you know, they were just okay. Especially, Drake's came in the point of the show that I think everybody did probably did the same thing. I didn't do it, but I bet you a lot of people watched the NSYNC reunion then changed the channel. And after the NSYNC reunion, it was like, nothing else was happening, you know? And Drake was doing that. And uh, Drake's performance was just a typical hip-hop performance, doing a little bit of his new song, Look at Uncoming, while recreating the album cover. Without the baby for his album, nothing was the same coming out in a couple of weeks. And then he went to start from the bottom and he had a fake little little fireworks going on. It was just a typical hip-hop performance. Um, I gave up 
I, there was two fake awards I presented during the uh, BME review two years ago that I presented to the same people tonight. Um, I presented the worst attempted whole thing in 2011 to Kevin Hart and presented it again to him this year. And I also presented good performance, but should have picked a different song. That award also went to uh, Bruno, and once again, winning the good performance, but should have picked a different song award was Bruno. Now, I knew that Bruno was performing his new single tonight, but I kind of wish he did Treasure, though. That tre Treasure Live would have been killer. You know, with the choreography, that one best choreography, I like that video. But the new single is Gorilla. And it's just a sex jam. I did like the laser effects, you know, the laser effects was cool, but... You know, I just don't like the song. It's just not dancing at all. Cause I guess I'm a death track. I like dancey songs. I hope it uses a dance remix for it. But uh, it's just a it's, it's just a slow sex jam in, in the style of Prince. You know, I liked it, but it's just you know, with DJ purposes, I just don't like it that much. So uh, there you go with that. Um, with the my thoughts on the uh, performances this evening, the my opinion. And uh, so there you go. But besides the um performances. Uh, they only did an hour of show for the uh, the pre-show with Austin Mahoney performing. Mahone performing. I always say Mahoney, but it's Mahone. And Ariana Grande doing her Mariah Carey impression again. You know, try, She's trying too hard to be Mariah Carey. She tries to hit those high notes. Like she was okay and all, but, you know, stop trying to be Mariah Carey, sweetheart. Anyway, um, when it comes to red carpet, um, I like the Gaga's dress on the red carpet. You know, the, the on black, you know, the black, the long black dress and the black hair. And then uh, Ailey Golding looked very good in a little silvery, spiky outfit. Katy Perry, speaking of performances, uh, Katy Perry's performance, the ending of the show, doing war. I like the theme of it, you know, because war, I'm not, I, I, I've said it when I reviewed the song when it came out a couple weeks ago. I'm not the biggest fan of the song, but I know the people are going to like it. They're, they're going to sing along to it cause, because of the message, you know, like standing up tall and, I like the way they like pre wake like like Katie did the performance at the Brooklyn Bridge and she rode on a big prism bus and like she was on a bus training like like it was a boxing fight you know and the stairs and the bridge looked like a boxing wing and she was like a boxer kind of like a Rocky theme you know I like the the theme of the performance you know the boxing theme and it was the, it was the ending I think Gaga should have been the ending because Gaga did a better performance in my opinion but because uh, I'm not the biggest fan of war I like the applause but I wish the applause was more dancier. And also, Katie had her fans pick the next song to release, and it's uh, Don't Call Us. I don't like it because I heard the snippet. It's like a dubstep -y song. They should have voted for Walking On Air. Walking On Air is the song I want from Katie. Poppy, dancey as hell. You know, but sexy dancing, not kitty dancing like her last album, which she really shed, really buried the teenage theme era tonight with this performance. And uh, I liked it though, but, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the song, but I like the performance though. You know, I hope she does better songs from this album, Prism, which comes out on October 22nd. Speaking of new album and big announcements, there was two announcements made tonight during the show. Uh, first things first, Danny Kane reunited tonight. I think I've read rumors about Danny Kane reuniting, but now they reunited. I think I think all four, I think four out of five was there. They were there on the red carpet on the pregame show, including Aubrey. And they announced they got a new album coming out, new single coming out, Stormin coming out soon. But then, but the biggest announcement stemming from the VMAs tonight, it's um, the new Eminem album. Uh, a few weeks ago, Eminem premiered a new song called uh, Survival on the trailer for Call of Duty, Ghosts. And Eminem did say, things are coming soon. And now tonight, during the VMAs, there was a commercial reviewing the album title for his album and release date. The album title, and he's got a lot of pressure titling this album. He's got a lot of balls. And I hope the album's good, especially the name of it. It's... The T M M L P two. In other words, the Marshmallows L P two, a sequel to the two thousand album Marshmallows L P. I had that album when I was younger. That was my fucking jam that summer. I used to play that the hell. I got the C D for my birthday. I'll be edited. But uh, I love that album to death. I used to love Kill You and that's what like he's got a lot of pressure go doing it because the album comes out November fifth, one week before Lady Gaga, so Thanksgiving shopping season is going to be huge. Black Friday is going to be huge. With Gaga and Eminem both releasing albums one week after the other. And, uh, um, I like the recovery, but 
there was no songs like an ass like that. There was no funny dancey songs like a without me. You know, there was none of those songs in there. I know I, I played the songs to hell, you know, because people requested them at, at my DJ shows, you know, requested um, Not Afraid a lot. And of course, Love the Way You Lie before it got overplayed as well. But um, with him releasing the album titled Mushroom with this LP too, he, he better step it up. You know, he better recreate that magic with the songs. He did a com another commercial night that was like that sample Billy Squire song that sounded pretty good. And the survival's okay, but I just hope he comes back strong with this album that he really. Really delivers songs like Will Some Shady again, really poppy dancey songs again. You know, if he's releasing Marshmallow's LP too, he better step it up, man. Because Marshmallow's LP was the album that made him a superstar. You know, the album got, got him so much controversy about his homophobic things, you know, in this day of Macklemore being all about gay rights. You know, I think Eminem's changed his act too, but still. I don't think Eminem's going to be back to his old ways, like really dissing people, but I think. Just try to recreate the old sound, you know. Try maybe to do a Real Slim Shady Part 2. If you're, do, if you're doing a uh, Marshmallows LP 2, try doing a Real Slim Shady 2. You know, Poppy Dancy, funny songs again. You know, we want the funny Eminem. You know what I mean? Not this, like, the serious Eminem's cool, but we want the funny. We want the fun songs again. We want ass like that. We want shake that ass for me songs again. You know, just fun Eminem songs. Especially if you're doing a Marshmallows LP 2. Step it up, boy. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the awards. Show, uh, that was better. It was decent. I think it was better than 2011. Better, uh, kind of better in 2012. But you can tell people kind of bored. Like after the, uh, after the JT performance, the show kind of died down. You know, especially the the, the bullshit voting. But like I said, you know, Robin Thicke got shut out, and I believe he got shut out just because the songs overplayed. That's why I think he lost tonight. And One Direction fans, I knew they were. I had a sneaky feeling they were going to win the award. For best summer song, even though they don't deserve it, I played it a few times. But what I would think was the real song in the summer in my mind, but it's just because it lost because it got overplayed. And Taylor, I thought Taylor was going to be video of the year, but Justin won it because I thought her fans were going to be, her, her Swifties were going to be big, but JT fans are bigger too. Bigger than Taylor's fans. So there you go. That is the, um, the VMAs. Comment your thoughts below. I haven't said that in the video anymore, but comment your thoughts about the show. What was your worst performances? What do you think about Gaga's performance? Like, Gaga's performance tonight, it's kind of like the performance in 2011. People are going to love it, or people are going to hate it. But I liked it. Um, what was your favorite performance? Did you like the Insign reunion? Do you think Justin was teasing us? Do you think there's a full reunion tour on the way? Who knows? With Insync. But I have, like I said, I love seeing them back on stage again. Just to see those five guys again, and it looked great. Despite Kevin Hart's distasteful jokes. Um, so there you go. I know I like Wolf's Tumor, because I'm a fan of people like Anthony Jess and that, but come on. That was just bad, Kevin. Uh, that is it for my uh, MTV Video Music Awards review. I still watch... That's the only time I watch MTV anymore. I only watch MTV for VMAs, because I hate their shit. I make fun of their shit. I make fun of Jersey Horse. And they're doing another Teen Mom. God, I fucking hate that show. That's why I wear this shit. Because I want my MTV. The old MTV. Where they actually played videos. Damn it. Like every watch where they always. Like, doing every VMAs, they always make fun of. You know, MTV should play more videos. You know, I think it became a recurring joke that they stopped saying it because it just got old. The joke got old. Like I said, that's it for my review. Thank you all very much for watching. With that in mind, you've all been attacked by the review from Zach. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. See you all later. Have a great night, everybody. Stay cool out there with this hot weather, the heat wave. Summer's back in town only for a few more days because, you know, Labor Day is coming every great week. Have a great night. Yeah, yeah.